The Roblox game Surviving Couple Killers in Area 51 has a grand total of 41 badges for the player to find and collect. They range from simple tasks like playing for 15 minutes to completing complex challenges such as shooting an ally in endless survival mode with a pack-a-punch crossbow and killing 6 killers in the process. Yeah. In fact, at the time of making this video, I don't even have all of the badges on my main Roblox account. Mostly because I'm lazy, but whatever. So that gave me an idea for a challenge. How many badges could I get within Sanctic on a brand new Roblox account within 24 hours? Oh my god, is that the title of the video? But before we do attempt this undertaking, there are a few rules that I've given myself to make this challenge a little more interesting. Firstly, I'm not going to be using any game passes. No, not even the energy drink, as otherwise this challenge is going to be way too easy. And I know you will want to watch me torture myself. Oh yeah. Just you wait, we've got some fun stuff coming up. Now, I am allowing myself to invite one friend at a time to help me obtain these badges. Sure, I could just team up with randoms, but not only are some badges functionally impossible without player-to-player -player interaction, but it's going to save a lot of time on some of the more, shall I say, complex badges, and allow me to more or less cheese them. However, as an extra rule, I'm not allowing any of these friends that I invite to use game passes as well, to keep everyone on the same playing field. Also, we're not counting the event badges in this list because, well, they're unobtainable, of course. What, do you want me to hack the game to get them? Plus, they don't actually count towards the percentage completed in the badges collection screen, so whatever. Oh yeah, and one final thing. Sure, I am giving myself 24 hours to obtain all of these badges, but I'm not actually doing this challenge in 24 hours real time. But instead, I'm going to time myself based off of the statistics window on the main menu screen. Yeah, I know you forgot this thing existed as well. Mostly because I need my sleep and I'm not a night owl, okay? And no, I don't sleep with the light on, weirdo. But with those disclaimers and rules out of the way, let's start this exciting and not horrible at all challenge by making a new Roblox account, of course. All right, let's do this thing. Let's sign up for a new Roblox account then. It's been a while since I've done this. Sectic all badges. Wow, there's actually someone called Sectic all badges? God damn, okay. Area 51 all, aha, see, easy. There's no one called Area 51 or Badges, that is actually surprising. With my brand new Roblox account with zero badges to my name so far now set up, it was time to begin this challenge. For real this time. And no, I'm not changing my avatar. You're just gonna have to live with this abominable, disgusting- Actually, you know what, this default avatar isn't that bad. Or maybe that's because Sanctic players have made me hate bacon hairs. I swear to god, why is every single juggernaut mode sweat a bacon hair? It's like a virus. You need 50 kills to play extreme? Why? Hard and extreme are so easy, why do you need kills to enter them? So yeah, I'm gonna be starting with the classic mode badges first. Mostly because, you know, they're for babies and they're super easy to get. I'm sorry, if you struggle with these badges then I'm not sure what to tell you. In fact, you could probably just use this entire video as a tutorial to get all of the badges. I'm just doing them in 24 hours, you can just follow along. Now to save many hours, I'm going to try and get some of these badges at the same time as other badges. You'll see. And the very first badge I went for was the way out. Yeah, not how you expected me to start off this challenge, huh? Definitely didn't almost fall into the void doing it, but hey, look at that! That's the first badge down already. Only 38 to go! Something I immediately noticed when I started running around the area in classic mode, though, was how slow I was. Don't get me wrong, I missed all of the game passes within Sanctic at some point during this challenge. Well, okay, except the freeze gun. I don't really care about the freeze gun, it's completely useless. But, you know, the walk speed game pass especially, God, I hate being really slow. Us game passes in Sanctic really take life for granted, let me tell ya. Once I did get my hands on a weapon though, I knocked out Attacker for getting my first kill. My next priority after this was to slowly work on the Air 51 personnel achievement, which is basically a badge that requires you to find a long list of items and locations around classic mode. I last completed the Air 51 personnel checklist way back in 2018, and was happy to see it have barely changed since then. It's not a super hard badge or anything, it just takes a little bit of time, but I'll get it. However, in this clip you're going to see that I already made a crucial error, as my my mind was focused on killing the giant zombie, I walked straight past the atomic bomb badge. Don't worry, I have 23 hours left, I'll probably get it. Too easy. Oh! Wow. <laughs> case file, I guess. I mean, I'm very glad that there's not a badge to get all the case files, otherwise, well, this video might not exist. So, you know how I was gonna try and get the Air 51 personnel badge right? Well, just look at my avatar for a second. If you've ever attempted this badge before, you'll know that I've already made another mistake. Can you see it? Don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll give you a second. Took me a while to realize it myself. 
I forgot to get the zombie more. Eh, whatever. Gave me a chance to go back up to the surface to get the board soldier badge. That would have been embarrassing to do at the end. I just realized when I was in the radioactive area, I forgot to get the atomic bomb. Before I did go back though, I got the assailant badge for killing 10 killers. Again, very easy. You know, I am making a couple of mistakes here and there, but don't worry. Classic mode badges are really easy and super forgiving if you mess up. I mean, you could just drop back down and attempt the badge again, it's just like that. So, at the very least, or at the very most, I'm only losing a few minutes. Hey, look at that, finally obtained the atomic bomb badge that shouldn't have taken two attempts. And no, if you were wondering, I didn't kill the giant zombie again for the personnel achievement like a noob, just walked right past it. After that, I went looking for the alien code and found it fairly quickly if I'm being honest. Good thing I have all of the code locations pretty much memorized. I wonder if the code can still spawn on the surface. Ugh. Got the badge and almost got camped by alien while exiting the vent. That would have been a horrible way to go, but then I almost died to rake 10 seconds later. Oh boy. In fact, looking back at this footage, it's a miracle I didn't die. You really can't get as comfortable with insect without the health boost game pass, even in classic mode. Then after finding a couple more extra weapons, exploring a few secret paths, and pack-a-punching a weapon, I obtained the golden key and unlocked the execution room to obtain both the Air 51 personnel and execution room badges. I made sure I didn't miss anything, but we're still not done here. There are a few more classic mode badges that I need before moving on to the next mode. One of those is for discovering Cleaner 2, and as soon as I found the code for it, I obtained the badge for playing for 15 minutes. Yeah, I really did all of the previous work within that time. That's gotta be a world record right there. But yeah, we'll just skip past this badge, Cleaner 2 is pretty easy. But even if it seems like I'm speedrunning through the game so far, don't get too comfortable, as of course these classic mode badges are nothing compared to the challenges coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I decided to go for the free aliens badge next for beating Air 51 storming mode, because I only need to play this mode once and it's better if we get out of the way now. Alright, well, I could be Kyle. Oh, I could get energy drink. Alright, we'll be Kyle, sure. Oh wait, what? Oh, okay. Well, that was a horrible decision. You actually don't get the, uh, the, the egg energy drink. I thought you, I thought you got the regular energy drink for free as Kyle. Well, yes, we're just gonna have to do this as Kyle, it's fine. Yeah, I really thought you were given the energy drink game pass for free as Kyle. I mean, come on, it has the regular energy drink in the icon for the role. I have been scanned by Homo Mafia 1 himself. What? What happened? What happened to the leader? What, what happened to his icon? It's all weird. But me not having the energy drink in a mode where healing is incredibly important wasn't my only problem. Right, can Kyle's pick up guns? Okay, yes, all right. Forget this, just, just as an extra. Oh wait, what? I can only hold one gun at a time? What, that's so stupid, what? That's so dumb, why is that a thing? I could only hold one gun at a time? I'm not entirely sure if that's a Kyle thing or a no game passes thing. I just know that it's not my fault. I'll just never have to switch out my gun ever. That'll be fun, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure Kyle's also have less health than the other roles or something. As you can see in this clip, I lost over half my health to a single shot of an SVD. Oh boy, why would anyone willingly become a Kyle? No idea, but I mean, come on, you don't get the energy drink, you can only pick up one weapon, and you have reduced health, I think. As per usual on the first stage of storming though, half of the servers stood completely still and sacrificed themselves to the gods. But after I almost died to a single shot of an SVD, I can kind of understand why. Although I can tell from these clips that I was acting incredibly recklessly. In fact, I almost died several times throughout storming mode. Mostly because I hadn't gotten used to the reduced health that normal players had, something I'll learn the hard way later on. Oh, just you wait. But honestly, this round of Air 51 storming actually went really well, all things considered. In in fact, the only differences between having game passes and not having game passes in Storming is that you just have to be a lot more careful. Something I'm not very good at doing, as you can tell. Also, I got pretty lucky. Many of the players in my server had game passes, so they definitely helped me out. Don't worry guys, I didn't invite them, this doesn't break the rules, I swear. And in the end, I beat Storming Mode on my first attempt. Looking back, I'm very glad I did. Can you imagine how annoying it would have been to redo this mode several times? Would not make good content. So yeah, I got the the Freed Aliens Batch. 
What more do you want from me? Moving on to kill house mode next, there are only two badges I need here. Speedmaster and Hawkeye, and they're going to help out with the later challenges. I knocked out Speedmaster on my first try. Honestly, the kill house parkour is for babies, how on earth do people struggle with it? Okay, well, the truss is kind of annoying, but everything else is easy. The shooting range was a little more challenging, since I didn't actually have access to snipers yet, but even still, it's quite literally impossible to fail this badge. Too easy, I got that done in two Two minutes, guys. What's what's your excuse, huh? Oh, Mafia One's group wall, huh? What's your excuse? Although I didn't need to beat it that fast, I have to stay here a little longer to work on the exotic gameplay bench for later, which requires you to play at least 20 minutes of each of the game modes. So I just practiced on the kill house parkour in the meantime. My best run was 35 seconds. Not bad for someone with no game passes. Alright, did I get it? Oh my god, 20 minutes and 1 second, are you kidding me? I know things are still going really slow, we've just passed into the first hour of this challenge, but I assure you things are going to get a lot faster from here on out. Well, faster for you, this challenge was long and boring for me, let me tell ya. Still working on that exotic gameplay badge though, played killer mode for 20 minutes, and I have to say, I didn't feel as bad this time for being on the survivor team. How fitting I obtained the assaulter badge for killing 50 killers during this mode. I also played 20 minutes of both hard and extreme classic mode. I'm not entirely sure if they're required, but I played them anyway. Hey, I can work on the Marauder badge, which requires me to get a thousand kills, if anything. Also, I remember that the helpful killers badge existed. I was going to obtain this thing later with the help of a friend, but whatever, using NPC killers works too. Finally, using my super epic calculations and not looking up the information on Google, I deduced that my mysterious entity spawn for my account was located in the desert. I got lucky, that's the best spawn out of all of them. Throughout this challenge, I'll be routinely going back to extreme classic mode to check for the mysterious entity's presence. Hopefully I obtain it, but you know, the mysterious entity's spawning is kind of, you know, not fully known at the moment, so this might take a while. But why worry about that, because now it's endless survival time. Oh yeah, if you've ever played endless survival before, you know how annoying the badges are in this mode. They're not too challenging or anything, but some of them can take a really long time to get, so that's why I'm getting them out of the way now. I started with Lockdown first. It's by far the most simple bench. You just need to survive five rounds without opening the first door. And I have to say, even without the MP5K starter game pass, this badge was still supremely easy to get. You don't even need to beat round five to obtain it. Oh, but there's still a lot that can and will go wrong, because I still have quite a few endless survival badges left. Not before another mysterious entity check though, and no, I didn't get it, what do you expect? Now, unlike classic mode, I had actually come to endless survival a little more prepared. You see, I had calculated that I only needed to play like four sessions of endless survival to get all of the badges within this mode, which actually isn't a lot of gameplay. By doing this, it's going to save me a ton of time, time I'm definitely going to need by attempting the <coughs> other badges. For this first game of Endless Survival, I'm going to attempt to get Powerless, The Curse, and Tiny Destruction all in the same play session. Something that I realized immediately though is that Endless Survival seemed way buggier than it usually is. Killers just kept getting stuck on the barricades. Not sure why, but it was very annoying. And while I was distracted by this glitch at my weakest point, I was clamped by Chucky. It was entirely my fault. That is a uh, little, uh, little annoying. Wasted about 10 minutes. But of course, one simple death is not going to stop me. And on my next attempt, I had an idea. You see, on the early rounds of Endless Survival, killers take a long time to respawn. Meaning, for most of the time, there's only one or two of them alive at once. You see, I'm trying to get the Tiny Destruction badge, which requires you to kill a single killer with the nuke power-up. Which, you know, isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. And on the later rounds, well, this badge is going to be near impossible to get because, you know, killers are spawning like crazy and it's really hard to isolate one killer and get the nuke power up, it's just a giant mess, okay? And because killers can only drop power-ups while they are outside of the barricades, I stop rebuilding them and let them roam free. Yeah, it's a little risky, but if I can get this badge done early, it won't slow down my later sessions. Sadly, all I got was this useless insta-kill on round 3. That would have been really cool if that was a nuke, but whatever, at least my strategy works. However, on the very next round, I got my chance. I killed all of the killers in the surrounding area, hit the nuke power-up, and didn't get the badge. Turns out I had killed two killers with the nuke instead of one. As you can see, I was very upset. I killed two killers! Two! There were two! There were two killers! Really? It's like they say though, the first attempt never always goes according to plan. And a couple of uneventful rounds later, I was blessed with another chance. And I was not gonna mess this one up. 
going insane by the second. <gasps> ah. Kaboom. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Tiny destruction! Oh my god! And a couple of rounds later, after just a few mystery box rolls, I got the curse for getting three teddy bears in one play session. Again, pretty easy, just took a while. I'm very grateful the mystery box didn't move to the bunker or something. That would have just been a nightmare. And I got the powerless bank just two rounds later. I said I would, didn't I? Although I'm not really a fan of having to die to get badges. I wish when you just reach round 15, the game would just give it to you. Oh well, I'm not the one who makes those decisions. So now I only have four endless survival badges left. Oh yeah, I'm gonna try and do Locksmith, 50 rounds, and It's a Trap all in the same play session. Should be pretty interesting. If I mess this up, I'm losing like three to four hours of work. How fun. In fact, I'm fairly certain that most of you probably don't even have the 50 rounds badge. Me, I've done it like six times over. You know, whenever I record footage for videos, I just go up to round 50, just just casually. It's it's very boring. I, I, I just sit there for three hours and just go up to go up to round go up to round 50. What am I doing with my life? It's a Trap is a fairly easy bench to get. All you need to do is kill a single killer using each of the traps within one play session. Who would ever use this trap? Has anyone actually ever unironically used this trap? It sucks. You've got killers coming from that way and you need to lead them in. And they take like a second to die. This trap is terrible. And there we go. Do I really have to show you the footage of me using the other traps? I don't think so. Now, dear audience, you're about to witness the greatest mistake anyone has ever made in Sectic ever. If you want to go away after this video and try and attempt this challenge for yourself, please, whatever you do, do not do the locksmith badge, or at least attempt it, until you get to round 50. This is because after you do open all of the doors in Endless Survival for the locksmith badge, the game becomes laggy. Like, extremely laggy. You probably can't tell from the footage I'm showing you, but just know that these seconds for you were long, painful hours for me. And that wasn't the only discovery I made in this Endless Survival playthrough. Wait. What? You can get a thousand kills in Endless Survival and it counts? You can do that? That's a thing? I thought you had to do it in classic mode. So you're telling me all that grinding that I did in classic mode to get 10 kills, 1 kill, 50 kills, and working my way up to a thousand kills was utterly pointless. I wasn't even recording, and I just randomly got that bad. You can get it in endless. I had no idea. Now, as entertaining as it might be to show you all 50 rounds of uneventful endless survival gameplay, I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Hey, look at that, round 50. I promise I did every single one of them. I completed an extra round to check that all of the doors were open just to be safe for locksmith. Yeah, I wasted some time, but I didn't want these past three hours of work to be for nothing. Okay. Yes! Locksmith! Okay, I didn't need to check anything. I wasted time, but that's fine. We got him. And now I only have one endless survival badge left. Bolt bait. To get it, all you need to do is shoot another player with a pack of punch crossbow, lead killers into the player's corpse, and kill at least six of them with an explosion. Oh yeah, it's probably the most overcomplicated badge of the game, but not difficult if you know what you're doing. So for this badge, I'm going to need a friend to help me. Did somebody say they needed a friend? Uh... No. Oh. Dude, you haven't been in a video for like five months, where have you been? Coco plays games one underscore seven. Who's this person? Who are they? Who are they? Even through editing, I'm not entirely sure who the stranger that managed to join me was. They've never been in one of my videos before ever. Oh well, we'll just call them Coco, and they can say for now. The round was going swell until we made our way to the first mystery box location. Oh yeah, it's gambling with trash RNG time. Because uh, otherwise, if you use it, then it'll... what? No way! No way! No way! First time? No way! Guys, I 100% promise that I did not accidentally turn on the mod that gave me better mystery box drops. You'll just have to believe me that that was my first pull. You see, everything was going well, I had obtained the Pack-a-Punch crossbow, and I was on my way to get the Quick Revive perk until I was clapped by Alien. This is bad! I know Coco died here as well, but it was 100% my fault. I shouldn't have asked her to come save me. And now we have to do all that again. You know, actually, I can't really be mad. I mean, we did get the crossbow first time out of the mystery box. You know, it's possible that we could just get that again, right? 
<laughs> no. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really not sure what was up with the mystery box from here on out. It just straight up refused to give me the crossbow. I don't know if the guns that you get out of the box have their own chances of appearing or not, but it definitely felt like the game was just taunting me at this point. It must have gotten mad that I died after the first time it was nice to me. I don't know. So for the next hour and a half, we went from endless survival session to endless survival session trying to gamble for the crossbow, because the mystery box just kept moving to either the bunker or the back of the Wendigo area, which is just awful spots to be in in endless survival mode. <sighs> Please... No! What is it? Eagle. Ah! You have no idea how many useless ray guns I got out of the mystery box. I mean, usually I would be happy about receiving the ray gun at a reduced cost, but compared to the crossbow for this challenge, it's utterly worthless. Oh my ray gosh, gun. I didn't need that! Gotten so many ray guns and not the crossbow. But yes, after almost two hours of gambling and complaining, the game finally decided to give me another crossbow. <gasps> crossbow, yes! Yes! Finally, oh my god! I was already very happy, but guess what? I got just two mystery box pulls later. She likes you, okay? Bruh, really? Really? On the next spin, I got a crossbow. Really? I checked. It took 41 pulls from the mystery box, including fire sales, to get the crossbow a second time. Hey kids, this is why you don't throw your money into mobile games. Gambling is very addicting. Almost died again because I'm just good at video games, but don't worry, this time I actually remembered to get Crook Revive. So I was fine, and after another 20 minutes and a little bit of patience, we finally did it. Okay. Now, now, now go into them. Now go into them. Right. Yes! I got it! Yes! Let's go! First try! But sadly, our troubles weren't over just yet, because the next mode on our list was Bash Rush mode, which also requires two players for me to play, so this stranger known as Coco is going to be staying with us for a little bit longer. But before that, I did another mysterious entity check. Nope, still nothing. Now I want you all to know that even after almost three years of playing Boss Rush mode, I somehow still suck at it, paired with the fact that we don't have game passes and, uh, well, okay, enough joking around, we beat Aberration first time. Yeah, if you choose the sniper class, this boss is pretty much a piece of cake. But, uh, Kraken? Kraken is a different animal when you don't have game passes, let me tell you. Well, okay, most of his normal attacks are fine and can be dodged easily. The main issue is his slam attack. This one, where he slaps a few of his tentacles on the ground. Maybe it's just me being bad at the game, but during my playthrough, it felt like there was no consistent way to dodge his attack. I mean, Coco felt the same way, so either we're both bad at the game, which is definitely a possibility because I suck at boss rush, or maybe the game's just flawed. I tried moving forward, standing still, moving the other way. Nothing consistently seemed to work. The only times where I didn't take damage just seemed to be due to lag. And it's not like the attack does a teeny tiny amount of damage. No, it takes off a chunk of health. Health that you can't get back quickly. Plus, it's one of the few attacks where you're actually able to do damage to the Kraken. Paired with the fact that it's one of his most frequent attack, and yeah, I died a lot. More than I want to admit. Oh, what? 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 So now I have a new teammate. Sorry this is kind of out of nowhere, but they'll be helping me with the remaining bosses. They go by the name Area 51 a few badges. Who is this person? We may never know. But what I do know is that they're actually good at boss rush mode, unlike me it seems. Oh my god. What <laughs> just explode? <laughs> nah, actually Kraken is just rigged. Oh, what's that? Where did Coco go? Um, she, she left. Yeah, she, she left. Maybe she'll be back later, who knows. Wait. You're inviting new people? I can't wait till I get my own dedicated video. <laughs> it's never gonna happen, is it? What? Why are you still here? Something that me and Air51 a few badges noticed that while we were fighting Kraken was sometimes the immense lag or delay between attacks. Maybe that was why I couldn't dodge his tentacle slam attack. We may never know. I mean, sometimes Kraken would just break entirely. Nope, I'm not joking. Look at this. It's a very buggy boss, it seems. Not sure why. Thankfully though, after about half an hour of attempts, we finally took the W. Shouldn't have taken that long though. Yes! Oh, finally! Woo! Oh. So now that we've beaten both of the normal bosses, we now move on to their elite forms, because you know, there are badges for both of the elite forms, and basically the elite forms are just harder versions of the original. You know, Aberration, we beat her on the first try, and Kraken only took a couple of attempts, so, you know, the elite bosses can't be that bad, right? <laughs> right? 
Now, I'm no speedrunner or world record holder when it comes to boss rush mode, sure, but oh my god, are the elite bosses insanely difficult without game passes. How difficult? Well, they might be near impossible if you don't get lucky and get their attacks in the correct order. No, like actually, it's not even skill-based anymore. I don't think anyone in the history of ever has tested the elite bosses without the benefits of the energy drink and the increased health game pass. Because oh my god, I wanted to tear my eyeballs out several times. Seriously, if you think I'm lying, after this video, try and beat the elite bosses without game passes. Please, do it. If you manage to beat them within 20 attempts, you have my eternal respect. I mean, not all of the deaths were the game's fault, some of them were just me being dumb, but still, this boss is ridiculously hard. This game is supposed to be for children, right? And you have to know, I still don't know how to dodge the slam attack. Plus, some of his attacks instantly kill you, because why not? This one's not so bad. Oh god, oh! What? what? It instantly kills you? What? Oh yeah, it does. It does That's it so you. dumb. Yep, I'm fully convinced that this boss was not tested for those without game passes. Hey Ash, you know how you like kind of suck at this game usually? Well, try doing the reverse of that. Try actually being good at the video game. You might actually beat this stupid boss for a change. All right then, you do it. Clone of me who still doesn't have a name. You give him a try then. Okay then, I will. Watch and learn from the pro. Fish face. Back to regular Ash now, don't worry, the Elite Crack and Torture is almost over, but I'm really mad about this clip in particular. I got really close to killing him and, uh, still died. I will not play the audio, as I said some very not family friendly things after this. Listen, you have to understand that we had attempted this boss for around two hours at this point, and this was probably the first round where we actually had a chance. This was then followed up by starting up another round. Ended up dying, started up another round, ended up dying, started up another round, ended up dying, 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 dying. Boss Rush is not a skill focused game mode. I'm telling you right now though, the only reason we were able to beat Elite Kraken is because we kept getting the right attacks in the correct order. Basically, just kept getting back to back attacks where we were able to do damage to him, and finally, after almost two hours. You're chilling. Yes! 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 Finally! Woo! Finally got we it. did it! What an incredible first attempt victory. Of course, we won out the woods just yet. We still had Elite Aberration to complete. But Aberration has always been infamously easier than Kraken. So this badge didn't take long to get at all. There's only really two attacks that come from Aberration that are really a problem. The ungodly laser attack and the ball attack. Huh. Since when did you get such big balls, Aberration? The laser attack can kill you instantly without game passes if you happen to make the fatal mistake of accidentally stepping into it for more than half a second. I am not joking. No. What? Instantly dead. Oh yeah, I died to this attack many, 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 many times. It's very similar to Kraken Slam Attack, where it seems like there's no consistent way to dodge it. That or I'm just bad at the video game, not to mention it moves at speeds never before seen and lasts for like 30 seconds. Completely skill-based, I know. The ball attack can be countered with a well-timed direction change at the last minute, but not always. And if you happen to get caught in it without the health boost game pass, you will die every single time. Not sometimes, every single goddamn time. If you make a single mistake, Aberration just does not care. You, you will be punished greatly. But uh, yeah, apart from those two attacks in particular, Elite Aberration is mostly a fair fight for those without game passes. Maybe. Well, the pillar attack is also kind of dumb since if you get picked up by it without game passes, there is a 100% chance you're dying. Unless Aberration pulls you out of the way, but why or why would that ever happen? But I guess it killing you with a 100% chance makes sense since all you have to do is stand up against the wall to avoid the pillars, so whatever. Homer, please do not remove this completely intentional feature. What? 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 How many? What? How many pillars do you want us to avoid? Oh my god. It literally, as soon as the pillars go down, pillars again. Of course, like I said, this fight wasn't as bad as Elite Kraken's fight. We were done within about an hour and ten minutes, which for us isn't too bad. And better yet, we didn't take the slightest bit of damage during the final battle. Yeah. Yeah! Easy. First try! Easy. Easy! Those flawless, flawless runs! The Elite Boss is a hell. This is hell. But yeah, I'm very happy that we were actually able to beat the Elite Bosses. I genuinely thought several times that they were impossible to beat without game passes. I mean, in many ways they are. You know, you have to get stupid lucky that you get the correct attacks in the right order. So, you know, I guess they are impossible. 
And guess what? My faith rewards me yet again. Because, well... Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I got the mysterious entity! Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Yeah! Mysterious entity! Woo! We did it! At last, the mysterious entity bench was mine, and it only took a few checks. I might actually have a chance to beat this challenge now. Maybe. If you haven't been keeping track, we're now halfway there. 12 hours remain for me to get the last 7 badges, most of them tying into one mode, Juggernaut. Now there's a pretty good reason on why I left the Juggernaut badges for last, and that's because most of the Juggernaut badges all depend on one uncontrollable variable, and that variable is the other players in your server. Sure there are some variables that are based on RNG, but for most badges if you follow the same strategy, you'll come out with similar results, even for the balanced and totally not broken at all elite bosses. But here's the thing. Every single Juggernaut server is filled with entirely different players, with different levels of skill, meaning you'll have to just get lucky for the Juggernaut badges and hope you end up at a small server filled with a bunch of 9 year olds. But there's actually a really cheesy way around this that your school doesn't teach you. Don't worry, it's perfectly legal, I promise. You see, if you block someone on Roblox, you can never join each other on Roblox ever again. You can try joining their game, they can try joining your game, it just won't work. Until you unblock them, of course. And because Juggernaut Mode has a habit of placing you on the same server over and over again even after you leave and rejoin, if you block the top guy in a really sweaty server that you don't want to be in anymore, Roblox will be forced to put you in a different server. It's a helpful way to not get absolutely clapped by the people who play this game instead of spending time with their family, when all you want to do is just play some relaxing Juggernaut Mode with your friends. <laughs> Yes, because this game is relaxing, and all you have to do is repeat this until you get into a game with really newbie players, so that you can get the badges with a little less hassle. Because let's be real, all it takes is one or two game passes with over 100,000 points to ruin your day and make you very upset. Listen guys, it's a video game and I need my badges. Listen, I, I need my badges, okay? Anyway, with that strategy in mind, and oh look, Coco returned, top 10 anime comebacks, am I right? The first round went great. I did over 1,000 damage to the Juggernaut and was responsible for the final blow, which allowed me to get two badges instantly. Oh my god! Yes! The real Juggernaut and the final blow! Oh my gosh, already! Two badges on the first round. And guess what? Two rounds later, the Juggernaut is AFK right next to the pack of punch machine. This is my chance to get Dominator. All you have to do for this badge is deal 200 damage to the Juggernaut with a pack of punch weapon and win the round, which usually is a kind of tedious badge to get, but here I basically got it for free. I'm seriously on a roll here, but about half an hour later, I became Juggernaut. Time for yet another badge. Now, to get close call, you have to be on less than 10% health as the Juggernaut once the round ends, and you also have to win the round. But unlike the other Juggernaut badges, you don't actually need 12 people in the server for you to receive close call. And in fact, in the server there were only 3 players. Me, Coco, and some other mysterious guy who walked into the cafeteria fan, apparently. Meaning I can cheese this badge. Let me show you. Yeah, it's nothing too complicated, I basically just got Coco to shoot me until I was one hit away from death and killed her. Oh yeah, 100% skill right there. Oh yeah, and I also apparently got the exotic gameplay badge around this time. However, I didn't record myself getting it because I must not have been paying attention. I mean, can you blame me? I'm playing Juggernaut mode without the energy drink. It's like trying to eat soup without a spoon. And that's the thing for playing Juggernaut mode without game passes. Compared to all of the other modes that we've discussed so far, Juggernaut mode is by far the most different. 1v1s are near impossible and actually scary. Every Juggernaut, no matter who they are, hits like a truck, and if the Juggernaut targets you, there's a good chance you're dying. And to be honest, this is how Juggernaut mode should be. I actually liked having the possibility of death instead of being able to heal up all of my damage in a single click. It made the game feel a lot more tense. Is the mode as fun without game passes compared to having game passes? No, absolutely not. But even still, every single death felt deserved and honourable. Well, Almost every death. Holy- OH MY GOSH! Can you remain? Wow. Yeah, that's- that's totally balanced, guys. Yeah. What am I supposed to do about that? What's the counterplay? So now, there are only two badges left to obtain. Dominant Victory, which requires you to win a round as the Juggernaut with 12 people in the lobby, and have three minutes remaining on the timer, and also, yeah, you guessed it, Silent Killer, which requires you to win a round as the Juggernaut with, again, 12 people in the lobby, and be on full health once the round ends. This is it, fellas. 
the hardest badge in all of Sanctic. Another reason why I saved Juggernaut mode badges for last. The main reason why this badge is going to be so annoying to get is not because of its difficulty or the fact that we don't have game passes or anything. No, the fact that we're on a time limit and we only have a certain chance to be Juggernaut. It's all down to RNG, or at least I think it's down to RNG, I'm not entirely sure. And that's exactly what happened. I kid you not, for the next three hours, I did not become Juggernaut once. Not even once. Really not sure why. Maybe it's due to us constantly switching servers because good players kept joining us. Guess we'll never know. But it was definitely annoying. Good thing I saved up all this time left. So from then on, I actually played survivor rounds instead of changing servers like a coward. I'm not entirely sure how a player gets selected as the juggernaut, but I have a theory it has to do with you being in a server for a very long time. Not certain though. But yes, after waiting three long hours, I finally became Juggernaut again. Oh, finally Juggernaut, let's go! I'm Jeff, so it's not the best, but <laughs> finally! Yeah, I'm Jeff the Killer, but I can work with this. I'm used to picking random killers in Juggernaut mode anyway, this is no problem. An issue I immediately ran into though was this guy. Oh my god, this guy. All he did was run away the whole game and spam the crossbow and energy drink. I love Game Pass users, and even though I was targeting him, he still managed to escape. So it looks like I'm not getting Silent Killer. Oh well, I can still go for Dominant Victory. I was on severely low health, but thanks to the survivors making many mistakes, I was close to that 3 minute mark on the timer. However, then realized that there was still a bunch of players left. I mean, I still won, killed that really annoying Game Pass user, but didn't get any badges. <sighs> It wasn't a total waste of time though, I figured that I just needed a serve with less game passes, or no game passes at all, which I'll tell you for Juggernaut mode is a very rare occurrence. About half an hour later though, I had another chance, and no, I know what you're thinking, this isn't actually the same round as last time. Yeah, I became Jet the Killer again, and had the exact same spawn as last time. Nice, I'm really not sure why the game wanted me to be Jeff, but whatever. I'll take him over Michael Myers any day. Unlike the last round, however, there weren't many survivors that spawned near me, which is good because that was my downfall previously. And even better, there were severely fewer players with game passes. Looks like I'm gonna win this one. And at the end of all that, I had won the game in under three minutes, and uh, didn't get the dominant victory badge? Uh, I watched back the footage, and it turns out there are 11 people in the round when the game started. Remember what I said, I needed 12 people in the game to get the badge, so that entire round was utterly pointless. It's probably a good thing I didn't go for Silent Killer then, I probably would have just been angry. Oh well, I'm just gonna skip all the nonsense and go straight to the next Juggernaut round. Hey look at that, I'm not Jeff the Killer this time, that's a change. And I also checked and there were 12 people in the server, so at least I have a chance this time. Oh how horribly wrong I was. Everything was going well, I was getting kills, and then I got into a 1v1 with a tryhard Game Pass user. And I bet you can see how this one goes. I did kill him, but it took a full minute to do so. I love Game Pass users. Again, I still won, but no badges. So yeah, the only thing that we can really do at this point in the challenge is keep switching servers until we get lucky enough to find a server with people with not that many points, people that don't have Game Passes, and people who are playing on like trash mum's trash internet or something like that like we need to get super lucky no seriously there's not much else we can do at this point it's not like we can just pick a new killer or anything or up our chances on getting the juggernaut roll because the game just hates us maybe if we get a strong killer like leatherface or something we can heal our damage faster and teach these game passes a hard hard lesson i'm telling you right now though that's not going to happen especially because on average you become juggernaut about once every 30 minutes meaning we have about i don't know 10 rounds where I'm Juggernaut left. So after another hour, yes, hour of waiting to be Juggernaut, I was given another chance. And I promise this one goes a little bit better. Oh boy, I'm Juggernaut and I'm Jeff the Killer again! Oh. I don't know, but the game really wants me to be Jeff. Yeah, I'm really not sure why the game wanted me to be Jeff the Killer so much. Maybe it's part of an ancient written rule that I have to be Jeff the Killer to get Silent Killer. 
I'm not entirely sure. I started the round by carefully disposing of a wild stray game passer, with only minor damage done to me. This is a phenomenal start compared to my other encounters with game pass users. After that, I slowly, very slowly, dealt with the players who only had an M1911 to defend themselves. However, later on, I saw a player walk through a door which was a little scary. One single exploit could ruin this somewhat decent round so far. Thankfully though, he was just lagging, and I showed him what I thought of that stunt by murdering him in cold blood. Unfortunately though, this Trey's guy, well, he's gonna be my nemesis for this round, as he not only knows where I am, has an MP5K weapon, but he also has game passes that he probably bought by stealing his mum's credit card. Not wanting to initiate a fight to lose any more health, I close the door on him and move on to killing other players. Alright, so I must have watched this clip back at least 20 times. I have no idea how this junk bot player missed around 20 point blank shots of the M16A2 here. Maybe he was in third person or something, whatever the case, I'm very thankful he missed because I didn't take any more damage and killed him and after this bacon air sacrificed himself I was once again on max HP and now there are only three players left two of them being AFK and one of those players being Coco I might actually have a chance this time however we have a big problem Remember that Trey's guy from earlier? Well, guess what? He used the teleporter and packer punched his MP5K, which is very, very worrying. This is it, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary people. This is either going to be a crushing defeat or the greatest silent killer victory you've ever seen. Cast your votes now! I waited for him in the cafeteria, and with the pack a punch MP5K in hand, he takes off a chunk of my health. This is bad! Thankfully, though, he made the horrible mistake of focusing on his own health and gulps down the energy drink as I narrowly avoid his landmine. Thank God for that. And after the final sip of his energy drink, he finally goes down. Oh my god! 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 Don't die, don't die, whatever you do. Oh my god, I'm actually gonna get it! I'm actually gonna get Silent Killer! Oh my god! No way! Am I the last one? Yep. Yes! 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 <laughs> oh boy! You actually got We did it! We did it! Alright, I still got one badge left. Oh. <laughs> it took a moment for it to truly hit me, but... We just got the Silent Killer badge, probably the hardest badge in the entirety of Sacktuk, on an account without game passes. With Jeff the Killer! Like, wow! Ooh. Now I only have one badge left, Dominant Victory, which is far easier to get than Silent Killer. So let's just get this one over with, okay? Oh, I'm Fish Face. <laughs> nice. Alright, well, I gotta get dominant victory with fish face. And I have to say, this round went amazingly. It was really nice not having to worry about my health ever again. It made Juggernaut actually not stressful. I'm telling you right now, but fish face is actually a low-key, top-tier, underrated Juggernaut. Look at that damage! Now, I might have bias because I did make this killer. Kinda poetic, honestly. Getting the final badge I need with my own killer. What a great ending to this journey. I think it's safe to say that I absolutely tore through this juggernaut server. And guess what? It wasn't even a stupid newbie server either. No, I'm a big girl now. Look at this though. This is how you deal with a ray gun spammer on juggernaut mode. It's super easy. I don't know why everyone wants this gun to get a nerf. Just get good at the game like me here. This is it. With the final survivor killed, we've done it. The challenge is complete. We're gonna do it. Here we go. Final badge. Yeah, dominant victory. Woo! We did it! We did it! And there we go, every single badge in the Roblox game, Spamming Killer Killers and Air 51, collected in under 24 hours. Besides the event badges, but they're currently unobtainable, so they don't exist for this video. Not even in 24 hours, mind you. 19 hours and 49 minutes to be exact. Just over 4 hours to spare, at least according to my calculations and the statistics screen. Huge thanks to both Coco and Br I mean Area 51, a few badges, for helping me with some of the challenges in this video. Without them, I guarantee you this video would not exist. I still can't believe it to be honest, in fact this video was originally going to be called How Many Badges Could I Get In 24 Hours? Not I Got All Badges In 24 Hours, I mean, I genuinely thought I wasn't going to get both the Silent Killer and the Mysterious Entity badge, but uh, here we are. Alright Ash, I think that's enough screen time for you. Uh, 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 that, that could have been anyone's freeze gun. Nope, nope, not, not me at all. Definitely didn't do that. It was, uh, um, it, it was, it was this guy. It was him.
Hmm. Looks like they're stuck and they're not unfreezing. I guess the game's glitched. Um. Don't worry, guys. I think I can fix this. Hello, and thank you for calling Sanctic Game Passes FAQ. How may we help you? Ah, yes, you see, I We're accidentally sorry, froze my- We cannot offer a refund for the landmine Game Pass at this time. Well, that sucks. Uh. Hmm. Guess, uh. Ash is just stuck like that now. Um. Uh. What do I do now? How do, how do I end the video? Uh. Ooh, look at what this. Look at this thing. That was weird. Um, guess I'll just go before Ash wakes up and kills me. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just disappear.